Good morning, everyone. Today I am going to tell you something about general organic chemistry. General chemistry, in particular. So we will see how the chemistry is going to impact our life because it has been considered as a sub branch of material chemistry. So in chemistry, if you see all the materials that we are looking all around us, they are composed of either atoms, molecules, or compounds. So to start with chemistry, we must know, we must understand the basic table of the chemistry which describes all the properties, it summarizes almost chemical as well as physical properties in a single table, it is a periodic table. I consider periodic table as one of the most important table being made ever on this earth. So starting from the periodic table, let us see what are its component, how it gives us idea about various properties in a single platform. So let us see about the periodic table. So the periodic table. So periodic table, if you can see, it is being divided into four major blocks, which are known as S block. P block, D block, and F block. So, out of all these blocks, if you see, every block is very, very important, very significant, and has a major impact in human development, modern science and technology, medical sciences, everywhere. So, let us see the structure of the periodic first of all. So, periodic table is just considered of some horizontal rows and vertical columns. So, we consider these vertical columns. Vertical columns are called as groups in periodic table. So, we have groups and they, move, they will move up and down in groups like this because they are columns. Now, considering groups, other things are the periods. And these are horizontal groups in the order. So what I'm going to do is I'm just giving you one of the lips. This is your S block. S block is having two columns, which we can say that S1 and S2. So out of these two columns, first one is alkali metals. So first group is consists of alkali metals. Second one is Alkaline earth metals. Now moving apart from this, we have a D block in between. So I will come to later this very fast, very soon. Now let us say about the P block because we are I discussed first S block, then P block. So now coming to P block, we are having this P block here, very beautifully positioned. It is in the extreme right. So S block is extremely left of the periodic table and the P block is extremely right of the periodic table. The P block is consisting of six columns. So let us see. This is P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and P6. So I will just name them quickly. P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and P6. Out of all these six, systems, this PC system, having a basic idea about the atomic structure, you will see that this P6 system is having the you know, complete filled electronic configuration. So they are considered to be inert because there is no more chance for any you know, chemical reaction. There is no scope for chemical reaction. That's why this group is considered to be the inert group or the noble gases they, they are existing. So out of this, I will just, you know, Go quickly. So these are the vertical columns, so it means they are the groups. Similarly, in the D system, we will have tenses. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 10. So starting from D, this is our this the system is you will see how the configuration goes from the system to there. 
but particularly let us come to S. So, this is our first period that will complete from S1 to P6, like this. Second period will move from this to this. Then comes third. This is our third period. So, if you see, the first element is hydrogen that all we know. Hydrogen is having atomic number 1. There are three isotopes of hydrogen that we will see in detail in our curriculum later on. So, this is hydrogen, the first element, then helium is the first noble gas and is the inert and lightest one. So, as we considered hydrogen earlier, hydrogen was filled in balloons to rise up in the air, but due to its ability to catch fire and have a blasting experience, so that to get to replace this, we have selected helium. So nowadays helium filled balloons are being used in particular for research work. Now, so this is hydrogen, second element is helium, the third one is lithium. So we all are aware with our mobile phones or different gadgets, we have lithium and batteries. So lithium is in particular nowadays very very important element because of its application in battery. Fourth element comes out to be the So, parallel is the first alkaline earth metal in particular, if you see. Now, moving apart, so after parallel we have boron, then comes carbon, then we have nitrogen, then we have oxygen, then we have fluorine, followed by neon. So, neon being atomic number 10. And it is the second noble gas. Now, moving apart, so we are coming to the third period. So, this is the first period of the table table. The second period. And now, we are moving to the third. So, what next? This is the most important. Sodium. Everyone is familiar about sodium. We get table salt, NSL. It's very, very important for making up, you know, uh, the fluid balance in our body. Uh, this is a major component of plasmoids, so it maintains the relation of the fluids along the permeable membrane. Sodium followed by magnesium, very very important element. Then comes aluminium, the most abundant element on the earth crust. Then comes silicon. So we are living in silicon era. Whatever the electronics we are seeing, whatever the display technologies we are having, we are all dependent silica. This next followed by the phosphorus, very very important for the bone and the fertilizers. Then comes sulfur. Sulfur is also very very important. Chlorine and then iron. So iron is the third noble gas. Chlorine is very important for the chlorination purpose to make water free of microbes to kill them. Generally this chlorine is being Used. Now, so if I move quickly, I will just write down those elements. So you just follow me. So I am just going for the you know, fourth period, then we have fifth period, then we have sixth, and so on. We will, we will move. And then we, I am just drawing you know, separately some other group, other part of the table that is that we can call it as F block. And F block has 14 such different systems. 14 columns are there. We just count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and I will add one more to make it 14. So this is the F block. F block we call them as lanthanides. First period is lanthanides and the second one is known as actinides. So these actinides they are generally they are generally yeah, so out of these two, lanthanide and actinides, these are radioactive. This actinides is it's radioactive, so usually uranium and all those nuclear atoms, sodium, everyone is a part of this actinide series. So usually we don't care about this in our syllabus, but for the medical purpose, this is very, very important in treatment of cancer and all. Yeah, and then in the first case, lanthanides, lanthanides are rare earths, 
very very important separation and all so you see and we can you know handle them laboratory we are using many purposes high scientific outputs so we will see them in separate class and economic in separate class so now if i am going to do this so we will do the fourth period fourth fifth sixth and then we have a seventh one okay so now let us see so the first group of the period which is the alkali metals it contains hydrogen lithium sodium then the next one is potassium then rubidium then cesium and next one the last element of this first group is transient cesium is very very important in silicon solar cells it because this the potential required to eject the photo electron is very very less in this case of the cesium that's why it is very very this is metal now because of its importance in solar photovoltaic transient is a radioactive nature and it's a liquid metal so transient is considered to be the first radioactive liquid metal now moving to the second part radium magnesium then comes calcium then strontium then barium and radium radium also a radioactive element now coming to the next part so this is a d block i will come to d block just very quickly now in this pigon system we see boron aluminum gallium indium thallium this is thallium next part you see carbon silicon germanium tin and lead lead is very very important it is having a story very long history tin and lead then nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and then this one the next part is coming oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium and polonium so if you, are, if you see most of these elements which we are getting down they are usually radioactive in nature these elements will become radioactive then chlorine chloride bromine iodine is a very very important element of organic chemistry as well as in organic chemistry in terms of compounds you will see later on but you see then comes kp ester this is a radioactive halogen now coming to this last part if you see this part in this case double gases helium neon argon then we have a krypton with atomic number 36 then we have a xenon with atomic number 54 Then we have red on atomic number eighty six. So that's how this period table is there. So most of the important thing is that this is the S block. We have I already told you that this is S block. S block contains all metals. They are very important metals. The P block is considered to contain metals as well as non-metals. But but most of them are about ninety percent of the P block elements are. non metals so they are very very important and the combination of these two systems when they react together they give some very very important component salts for the fuels in daily life now talking about the this system so it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 10 so how to talk about this how to talk about the d block d block is very very important to understand So particularly in the next lecture, I will explain all them, all of these uh, groups in a different way, in a detail. You will see the elemental chemistry, the reactions, the physical properties, the chemical reaction, and the application in human life. So now, talk about the heat block. Heat block is the most most important thing. If you see the gold, the platinum, all these important pieces, the silver, they all come from this. All the catalyst, important pieces of catalyst, they are also part of this block. So if anyone, anyone is willing to give someone the most pieces, they give all the deep block element. He will become the richest man on the earth. Now let us see. The first element of this system, deep block, is scandium. Then comes titanium, 
वेनेडियम क्रोमियम देन मैगनीज सिक्स एलिमेंट इज आयरन दिस इज एफ ई देन कम्स कोबॉल्ट देन निकल कॉपर एंड जिंक तो जिंक इज द टेंथ सिस्टम ऑफ दिस सिस्टम तो जिंक इज एनी एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ थर्टी एटॉमिक नंबर थर्टी Second is having atomic number of twenty-one. So first element of the D block is having an atomic number twenty-one, and the last of this first series, which we call, we may say that the three series, is having atomic number thirty. So ten elements are just sitting here. Then comes yttrium. Then lanthanum. This is zirconium, and this is hafnium. This is niobium, technetium, molybdenum, tungsten, and now this is the amine. This is tantalum, okay? Rhenium, ruthenium, osmium. Rhodium, iridium. This is actually palladium, and then comes which one is platinum. Then silver, important is gold. Then comes cadmium, and then the liquid metal which is room temperature is mercury, which is important. So it ruled the whole physics as well as the chemistry for so many centuries. So this this one was being used. This metal mercury is very very important. It is used for the purification of the other elements as well as for the temperature and all. So I hope that so this F block we will see tomorrow. I hope that you got an idea about the periodic table. We can we all can do this. It's very simple, very easy to learn. I will tell you the tricks. And all how you can you know learn this periodic table in a few minutes with the very less working you can get a lot of things. So as I already told, the left side of the periodic table it is all metals. The right part of this is that the noble gases which are you know, usually they don't wear they are considered to be inert and this part is considered to be the p block elements as from the p one to p five they are mostly non metals including some metal like. And this B part, B B block, B block is all metals. So as a whole, F block is also they are metals. So as a whole, we say that the whole table contains 80% are metals, and the remaining part is non-metals. So okay, thank you for listening. We will meet tomorrow at the same time, and we will see some details. Okay, thank you very much.